What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer at Cash App, and today I'm going to show you how to design progress indicators in Figma in accordance with Google's material design guidelines. Let's get started. There are two types of progress indicators in material designs guidelines, linear and circular. The linear one you can see here, it's that typical progress bar that you'll often see at the top of a page. And on the right you have a spinner, which is a circle that rotates as new information is being loaded. Something to keep in mind when using progress indicators is whether they're determinate or indeterminate. Determinate means that it shows how long something's going to take, meaning that it will go from empty to full or fully loaded. Determinate indicators should be used when you have a specified amount of time that something's going to take. Let's say it's going to be four seconds to upload something, the bar would load from left to right. On the right, you have indeterminate indicators. Those should be used when you don't know how long something's going to take. The difference in how these are animated is that the one on the left grows from zero to 100% versus the one on the right is a bar that moves from left to right but doesn't change size. Let's first create our determinate loader. I'm going to make a rectangle and we're going to set this to be 360 pixels wide and four pixels high. I'm going to set the color to be this light primary. If you don't have that, you can click on the link in the description and you'll be able to use this Figma file to follow along with the styles. I'm going to duplicate this rectangle and then I'm going to change it to primary and then I'm going to name this layer loader and I'm going to name that background layer background and then I'm going to take both of these and call this loaded and then I'm going to duplicate this go back to that original one I'm going to rename this null and then I'm going to take that loader and I'm going to subtract 360 pixels. I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to set it to clip content. Let's take this and we're going to create a component set. We will call this deterministic loader and then I'm going to prototype, click drag, and we'll set this to after delay. Let's just set this to a thousand milliseconds. We'll have this smart animate and we will have that animation be linear and we'll have that take 800 milliseconds. I'm gonna add this to my screen and I'll just keep it in the middle for visibility's sake. I will click on this, go to prototype, hit flow starting point, click play. And then you can see that loader loads from left to right. Let's now go ahead and create the indeterministic loader. So I'm going to take this component down here. I'm going to detach this instance. I'm going to take this component. I'm going to change the width to 144. I will have this be minus 144 from the left. And then let's call this again null. And then we will take this and we'll call it loaded. And then rather than having that fill the screen, we're going to take this, right align it, and then add 144 pixels. And then I'm going to take both of these. I am going to create a component set. Let's call this indeterministic loader. I will rename this to state and then I'm going to prototype these as well. So again, after delay, set this to a thousand milliseconds. This will smart animate, it'll be linear and it'll take, let's say a thousand milliseconds. And we'll take this after delay, set this to one millisecond and then have it just be one millisecond because all we're doing is looping this here. So if we take this loader, put this down here, We'll have this sit below our deterministic loader. If I reload the prototype, you can see how this one loads from start to finish, whereas this one just repeats. Let's say we wanted to speed that up a little bit. Let's go back to our prototype. And let's change this to 750 milliseconds rather than 1,000. If I reload this, you'll see that loader moves much faster. Last thing I'm gonna do is create my spinner component. I'm gonna create a frame that's 40 pixels by 40 pixels. We'll call this one. We'll remove the fill. We're gonna make a circle here that's 40 pixels by 40 pixels. We'll put that within the frame. We'll go in here and click on this arc tool and we're gonna change that arc to 75% and then we're gonna change this value here, which is the ratio to 80%. You can think of it almost like a stroke value. And then we're gonna change this from a solid fill to an angular gradient and we'll use that purple that we've been using. And I'm going to move this purple over here and then this value will stay where it is. We'll change it to that purple as well, but then we're gonna keep that at 0% opacity. We'll take this value, duplicate it three times. Let's take this second one. We're gonna rotate it in minus 90 degrees. And then we'll rotate this one, minus 180 degrees. We'll rotate this one, minus 270 degrees. And then we'll take all of these and then we're gonna create a component set. We'll call this spinner. And then I will take this first spinner and I'm going to go to prototype, click and drag and go to after delay one millisecond, smart animate. And we'll do that same thing for all of these. And you'll notice that I'm not making any changes to the smart animation because it preserves the settings of the previously applied prototype. So once you have that set the first time, you won't need to apply it again. 
Now that we've got all these made, I'm going to select this first one, hit Command C. I will go over to my prototype screen to make sure that I have closed the prototype. And then once I've got this centered and ready to go, I'll hit play. And then you'll see that you have an infinitely loading spinner animation. You caught a snag here at the beginning. And so I'm going to go back to my prototype settings and you'll notice that there is a 800 millisecond delay on this rather than the one millisecond. So if I change that and I refresh this, now it's seamless. And there you go. Let's pull this deterministic loader back in. And we'll also pull this indeterministic loader back in. And then let's take all of these, distribute that vertical spacing, fresh, and there you go. You've got a deterministic loader, you've got your indeterministic loader, and you've got your spinner animation. All as easy to use components that you can add to any Figma project. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of progress indicators, how they work, which one to use in which context, and how to make your own next time you're working in Figma. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.